Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be giving a presentation about the Edison Electric Truck at the Logger Conference in Spokane, Washington. This is the first time I've ever done a public presentation about anything and speaking in front of a large group of people. So let me know how it went in the comments and uh, enjoy it. Chase Barber is the co-founder and CEO of Edson Motors and co-founder and owner of Solar Energy Logistics. Chase and Eric Little started their own trucking company in their fourth year at University of Restoring in 1969 Kenwood. The trucking company transitioned to hauling and installing electrical generation systems to designing and engineering hybrid diesel electric power systems. Never letting go of his passion for trucking, restoring classic trucks and driving, Chase was the one who came up with the idea of Edson Motors by providing their hybrid power systems with the classic trucks they restored. So here's Chase. Okay. <laughs> I've never really done a presentation in front of people before, but yeah, I am Edison Motors and I guess we're building electric logging trucks out of Merritt, BC. Uh, oh, there we go. So yeah, me and uh, my business partner Eric over there, we uh, started our trucking company after university. We bought this 1969 Kenworth. We had like $4,000 left in our student loans. So we bought this old Kenworth, long logger, started hauling. And then we started low bedding equipment, started hauling equipment for cat, and then we started doing hauling generators, installing generators, and Eric figured out a way to do a bunch of solar battery system, make the whole off-grid setup run a lot more efficiently. So, we kind of kept expanding the trucking company and we got tired of new trucks because they honestly we bought a new truck and I think it was a piece of shit. We had it for like six months and it spent two months in the shop, brand new trucks. We sent it back into the dealership and we just started buying old Kenworths from the 70s and 80s and just restoring them up, fixing them. And uh, I think we were up to like eight trucks and then we're like, well, we're doing hybrid systems. Why don't we do an electric truck? And well, we're loggers and we figured we honestly, the entire way that electric trucks were done, we're making us kind of angry because nobody was making them for the vocational industry. Like a Tesla semi is never going to pull a load of logs out of the bush. There's just not a chance in hell. Nobody designs it. You go and look at these electric trucks. They're made for drive and freight and that is it. So this is our first electric truck. Uh, it's a 1962 LW Kenworth. So we stuck a 550 horsepower electric motor in it. It's got a set of batteries. You see it right along the side there. And this was really our proof of concept. First test truck. Uh, testing, we're getting about a 50% increase in fuel mileage. So because of logging, you're never going to be able to do battery only. It's just, it's, it's just not going to happen. A logging truck uses about two and a half megawatts of power per day. The Tesla Semi, the biggest one on there, has one megawatt of power. You would need two and a half times the battery just for a logging truck to get through the day. So because of that, what we did is we put on, oh, actually that one was a 3406 cat generator. So that generator runs, recharges the battery in about 30 minutes and you get about two hours of driving off of the thing. So in our prototype testing, we're getting about a 50% increase in fuel mileage. We're getting more torque, more power to the ground. It's absolutely just a fantastic way to go. Oh, here's a, here's a video with a truck driving. I don't know how to work this thing, but we'll see if that helps. Is there a way to play the video? out of here, fixed a few things, changed a few things. We needed to increase the cooling system. Turns out we were actually snapping drive lines a lot. You put her onto a Super B, she'll just twist that drive line off of the electric torque. Huge amount of torque. So we went to E-axles. That's what you see on the back there. Full on electric axles, so electric hub drive motors. We put all the inverters in the headache rack there. Came up with our own little truck there. We go through the hall, the whole thing works. So in our trucks now, and the ones that we're actually, we're just building our first production truck we're ready to sell, so that's kind of exciting. It's got a C9 cat diesel generator with an IP68 rated generator. That goes into the power inverters you see there. The power inverters take the AC power, put it into the batteries. The batteries then send the power back to the inverter into the AC electric drive motors. So it's got a 350 kilowatt generator. 
Um, that's the electric ones. And it's got 280 kilowatts of battery. So you do the math, it'll recharge those batteries in about 30, 45 minutes. It's only a third of the battery size of a Tesla Semi, but I mean, you're recharging that thing while you're driving. That's kind of how it works. And then the uh, electric drive motors. So they're, each one is about 320 odd uh, kilowatts, so about 350 horsepower each. So this truck, uh, the production one is putting out over 1,000 horsepower and 102,000 foot pounds of force to the ground. It is just a monster. <laughs> Uh, this is our in-cab display, how it shows everything. It shows you your battery life, what your generator is doing. The hardest one we had to work on is on the prototype. Everyone said, well, I don't know where the power is going or what it's doing. So uh, we came up with this. It shows everybody where your generator is fired up, your regenerative braking, all that. So getting into the specs, yeah, 1,000 horsepower, 100,000 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, the regen power is still going to be around 600 horsepower if you hold back. That acts exactly like your Jake brake, but when you're coming downhill, it puts the power back into the batteries. It's, this is why log, electric vehicles for logging make the most sense, because well, logging out on the west coast, you're going up there, you're coming down loaded, so you're using no power to get up there. You use that stored potential energy of the logs at the top, it puts the power back, and you just need the generator to fire up a little bit to get you to the mill. And I mean, we can't make it full electric, but literally nobody has asked for that. <laughs> We're working on the first five trucks, and everyone's like, no, we don't want full electric. It just will not do the job. <laughs> I'd love to tell you that electric and batteries are there. It's absolutely not. Like, we're just never going to see batteries in vocational for at least 20, 30 years until that tank gets there. Like, just making a battery electric truck alone would be 60,000 pounds of batteries you're going to have to carry around with you. It's just not a useful. <laughs> I'd like it to be, but it's not. So there you go, the electric motor, it's super efficient. Like there's no gears to shift. It'll, those electric motors rev to like 20,000 RPM. So there's no gears, you're putting power to the ground constantly, you, like you never break torque. It's not like a normal truck where, you know, you throttle into it, you get your turbo boost up, you shift gears, you lose your boost, then you shift another gear once the turbo comes back up. And like, this is just pure power to the ground, immediate 100% torque rate from zero. And then the generator, of course, is running at peak RPM, which is giving you a lot better fuel mileage because you're always running your motor exactly where your motor wants to be. Diesel engines love to just sit at a constant RPM under a nice full 80% load all day long. It also gives you better emissions because you're burning cleaner, you're not so loading your DPF filter, you're doing none of that black smoke is trying to clean out. It's just running where the motor wants to run. So it's a lot cleaner, it's a lot more fuel efficient, and it's only running 50% of the time. And it, we basically um, copy our thing off of this. Like Mill and Ath and Merritt, Aspen Planer, still uses a Letourneau from 1967. That thing is electric. Everything on there is electric. It's just diesel electric. Freight trains have been diesel electric since the 1930s. All the new CAD equipment, those new shovels, those uh, CAD haul trucks have been electric since the 1980s. Even the new Cat V8s, and like with the new Cat V6s, V8s, you're saying 35 to 50 percent better fuel mileage by going diesel electric. Like, and that's what we found. Like, we're getting 50 percent better fuel savings with this thing. The regenerative braking gives you much smoother power coming downhill. You got pure traction to the ground. Uh, you can actually put axles on the trailer, so if you're coming down some real steep stuff, we're working on that project right now. But you can have your trailer holding back while your truck holds back. And it's equivalent to running like a 20 pound application on your whole tires, but you're essentially putting the power back in. Uh, no gears to shift. Uh, you're never stranded with a dead battery. This is a cool thing is that each axle has an electric motor. The redundancy you would have to have to be dead on the side of the road. If all your batteries fail, the generator will still power the axles. If you blow out two axles, you still have one more axle to push you back. Um, and this thing is like electric. That is one of the things I did want to say is that it's really not that complicated. Like these Laternals from the 1960s were electric. It was a bunch of like Jippo loggers like us that built this thing working out of the, our back little truck shed. Like electric is really actually simple to maintain. And anybody that works in like a sawmill for like an industrial electrician, if you're used to working in like a sawmill and that kind of industrial power, it's all the exact same components that are in these electric trucks. Like, 
all these big OEMs try and sell you that, oh, well, electric is super fancy. It does all these things. You need to bring it back into the shop to service it. And like, that's just BS. Yeah. Like, electric motors have been around since the last 100 years. Everybody kind of knows how to fix them in every single town. Your contactors are basic contactors. Fuses are fuses. Wiring is wiring. Like, there's not, it is really, really mechanically simple. There is nothing to these trucks. Well, there's very few moving parts. And then what we're doing right now is we're basically retrofitting old trucks. We're still learning caps, I thought that'd be cool, but mainly doing a lot of retrofit. Take a chassis, you drop the axles out, you drop a set of fuel tanks, you have two saddle tanks, leave one, put the batteries on the other one, stick a couple on the frame rails, take out your transmission, put a generator on the back end, put in maybe a smaller motor to make it more efficient, but yeah, re and re the motor, re and re the axles, re and re a fuel tank, and put the control system up, and you've got a diesel electric Huh, that was it. I'm going through that pretty quick. If you use the TikTok, we have like two minutes to get through a video. <laughs> uh, is there any questions here on this? I'm sure there's probably not. Yeah. What's your weight differential? Okay, so yeah, on that 62, we were 9,000 kgs before we started the conversion. We were 8,800. So we lost about 400 pounds of electric. Mainly the motors were a lot smaller, so we lost thousand pounds off a block going to a little bit smaller motor the batteries weigh about as much as the fuel tank we dropped and everything else just shaved a little bit of weight off so we ended up losing a little bit of weight which is hilarious because we actually get an exemption in bc where we can run an extra three thousand pounds of weight on the truck plus a four thousand so i can carry thirty four hundred pounds more than a normal truck which is kind of backwards, not how they intended the election rules, but they intended it to have a lot of weight batteries, and we just avoided all that weight batteries. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. What about de-icer? De-icer? Okay, yeah, so we got these little tanks, so we cheated a lot, and we ran a little Wasso heater in there, and it just heats the coolant line and circulates through the batteries. Okay, so apparently we lost the last few minutes of that, but there was only a question or two after. Overall, I think the presentation went pretty decent. I'm okay with how it turned out for the first time ever doing speaking, but uh, yeah. But any feedback you guys got on next time, things to improve on, things I forgot to mention, let me know. And I really appreciate it actually.